Okay, so there's our plane all over a messy table. And we just want to give this a test glide real quick. And that's kind of what we want to see. The um, wing wash is pulling it off to the right. And that's okay. We'll uh, bend the rudders a little bit. You can actually hear a little bit of the glue joint popping there. And let me hold on a second. I'll sit you right here. Let you see me twisting that. That just gives me some stab tilt. That way we can make sure that in glide even that this airplane does turn to the left. Yeah, not quite. No, it is. It is. That's where we want to be. So we'll make up a motor for it now. Okay, so we're going to make um, <clears throat> make a rubber motor for this plane real quick. Should be fairly uh, straightforward of a task because it is. And we're not going to make anything special because all we're doing at this point is we're just trying to um, get the airplane flying. So I'm going to make a uh, about a 14 inch loop of 332nd. It's kind of a nominal amount. And snip that off like so. Now I'm going to um, get out my O-ring material. This clear stuff. And I'm going to snip off a piece of that. I don't know how well that shows up, but there it is. It's about a sixteenth inch uh, long, I guess would be what you would call it. And to fit that on this, we want to cut this off diagonally. Like that. And that makes it easier to stick the O-ring on there with just enough sticking out to grab it. I'll pull the O-ring on. And you actually, you need two O-rings. So you cut uh, a third one because the second one just became uh, one of the rings of Saturn. And that one uh, is too thin on one side. There we go. So now we're just going to bring this together. We'll take a little bit of our dowel uh, recording 33, or some people will call it Molly Coat 33, a variety of names for it. And we're just going to tie a knot here in the end. It's just a granny knot like that. Now, because it's not going to stay, because it's lubricated, and hit that knot with a dab of glue. Like that. Now, on the inside here, not on the outside, I come in and I'm going to cut. Hard cut. Yeah, right. I'm going to tie a second knot. I'm going to cinch that up against that one. And since I don't have scissors around, I'm going to cheat because wire dikes actually will cut rubber. Like that. Okay, now I've got O-rings on there. All I have to do is smear a little lubricant on here. And we're good to go. So, we'll find something to hold this rubber motor because all we're doing is we're trying to just get the airplane in the air. Because all we want to do is see that it flies. So I'm actually going to just do this. I'm going to crank in about 200 turns here. I'm going to attempt to crank in about 200 turns here. 250. Ob 
obviously this is not the preferred way to do this, but it's a weekday late at night. Alright, so I'm going to slip my O-ring on the back. There we go. And everything turns freely, looking good. Apologies for the tea being cooked in the background, but okay. Now I'm going to switch hands, so I'm going to do this right-handed. And so we've got left thrust, we got all that, everything looks good. We launch the plane. And womp. Okay, so what went wrong? A couple things that went wrong. So let's take it back over here to the table. So the first thing is the airplane torqued in, and that means actually that uh, the real problem is it twisted off the front post. So let me glue that back, and then we'll be back. Okay, so if you look real closely, you will see that I went ahead and I just eliminated my wing twist. That just, uh, because I think it's excessive. Now the other thing is the airplane did start diving in. So we're going to slide our rear stab post up. So you can see there's a lot sticking out on the bottom now. That should eliminate the uh, tuck and run part of it. And so, now we will let it loose. And that is a penny plane attacking gliders. So, come out of here, you. That is a penny plane circling in a living room looking happy. And coming around to attack a Class D gas model. Looking happy. Beautiful. Ooh, a little bit of a dive there at the end. I think it just needs more up trim. So I'm going to come in here. Camera's not one to stay. Well, you're going to be in tilt world. Ah, there's a problem. One of those hits, I popped that stab post loose. Because if you remember, I said one of them wasn't secure. So, there we go. We'll glue that back. Okay, so I slid the stab even... Hope that show, oh, there we are. Even further up on the post. And we've just got a few winds remaining. So we just want to make sure the plane's being happy there. It's flying a little on the nose high side. However, for most of you, that's where you're going to want your penny plane to be. A little stall, but... Oop. Bloop. <laughs> okay, so 300 turns on the penny plane. And here it goes. And it takes off real nice like anything climbing a little fast. Probably going to get itself into trouble up there. Oh well.
twist in some extra pitch because it's running too fast. Like that. So we'll All right, here it goes. Yes. Well, no, it's a, uh, yeah, basically. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, the little uh, direction switch on there. Yeah, it, it is a Hall Effect sensor. Okay folks, so I now have two penny planes. It's the first time in a long time I've had two. Um, so you have finished watching the build series for the nonsense penny plane from J and H Aerospace. With huge thanks to Bill Gowan for paving the way for such an awesome piece of technology. Uh, final weight for this aircraft. It's 3.6 grams. Uh, the kit versions will be a little lighter because we're going to supply you with um, thinner, lighter motor stick. Uh, tail boom will, will grade fairly closely, and front end assembly we're going to keep that uh, keep that down as well. Um, this airplane flew with a, a couple of adjustments, as you saw. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining to you how to trim these for maximum performance because there's a lot been written on that topic. I will mention, however. If you notice, we were still um, uh, cruising on that small amount of turns left. So that means you're either going to need to get thinner rubber or you're going to need to raise the prop pitch. Um, probably on the, uh, um, on the production versions we may explore uh, or make available additional larger uh, propeller blade sizes. Not larger diameter, just larger blades so you can load the motors down a little better. Um, but uh, the main thing is go out there, explore the literature, understand eventually to fly, I mean, to fly competitively on any of your indoor classes, you are going to need to get a rubber stripper, and those are available from Ray Harlan at Indoor Specialties, um, indoorspecialties.com. Um, but this will get you in the air, will give you a nice flying airplane. Uh, the aircraft itself is capable of very competitive flight times. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Questions, comments? Comment section below, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching the Nonsense Limited Penny Plane Build video.